Hello and welcome to the broadcast today with Roger and Cheryl. It's just a delight to be with you. Um, here we are uh, coming into spring. We, we Spring has sprung and uh, we're just uh, bl- trusting you have a, a very pleasant and blessed time uh, during this season and uh, I pray that uh, you're just able to find a place where you can get with the body of Christ, get in the Word, get uh, you know, thank you for stopping by here. We're glad you're here. We love being with you, even, even like this. We 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 do prefer being, you know, face to face. But, uh, but at the same time, we got people around the world that we're reaching with this broadcast that we couldn't reach uh, on a weekly basis if we weren't uh, doing it like this. So. Uh, while I realize that most pastors want to have uh, people want warm bodies in the seat, uh, and I can appreciate that, I can appreciate that because I remember the uh, 2020 and 21 and all where we were just kind of not gathering much because of COVID and different things. But I thank God today that we can have both. We can have, uh, you know, all things were created by God and for God, and I believe the internet. I believe uh, uh, live. Uh, the things uh, all that that we use to reach out uh you know we're reaching into places we're, we've got testimonies of people in uh, pakistan of people in uh, india of people in different places thailand africa uh that hear the word of god that get healed uh saved and get uh j- just get their lives changed and turned around because of what they're hearing right here uh live and we thank god for that uh, so we're we're going to do everything we can to continue to do this, and uh, I would like to let me let me take a moment. Uh, you know, the Lord has told me to quit being timid about uh, giving people the opportunity. Uh, you know, some people say, "Well, you you you're you're begging if you ask for money." Well, no, I'm giving you the opportunity to join me uh, in in reaching out to the world. Uh, we're, we're praying that God. Uh, and, and there are other avenues open. The only question is, uh, is just having the money to do that. Right, right now, if we have fifty thousand dollars, God, <laughs> God would direct us. And you know that sounds big. I mean, my wife laughed just then. Uh, but you know, I, I, I don't think it's a joke. I think that we need to understand that whenever we, uh, whenever we have the, op- the, the means to do it. Uh, you know, and God's just prompting me. I don't believe God would prompt me if there wasn't somebody listening that could just uh, receive what I'm saying. Uh, but I, we want to take this. We're getting ready to go to Panama. We're getting ready to go to uh, to uh, Peru on the Amazon and the Amazon to take this word, to take this message, the word of, uh, and 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 just take. Jesus Christ into the lives of people that don't hear it every day. And I'm sorry to take up the time to hear, but, mm-hmm. but I just feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit that people are listening. And God just really dealt with me to quit being bashful. Uh, you know, I don't care what the skeptics say. What I care about is giving you the opportunity to stand with us. And if you obey God, then the need will be met. And it's not all in your hand. It's God can open up, uh, you know, open up whatever He wants to open up. Uh, you know, but the primary way I found God, Cheryl, found God uses, uh, God supplies need is He opens up uh, people's hearts that they stand because when we do that, then God can open up the blessing to us. Now, I won't get in, you know, there's all kinds of debates over whether the tithe is under the law or where it's not or <laughs> all that stuff. You know, that's silliness. That's just a bunch of, of uh, hypocrisy trying to get away from uh, from the responsibility of giving and supporting the gospel. Uh, so, uh, I just want to say that the opportunity is here. Because we're not we're not sitting on our laurels, just sitting back and and saying Kesara, Sara, whatever it will be. We are going as the Scripture has commanded us to do, has directed us to do, into all the world and preaching the gospel. One way of doing it is right here through this live, through the the YouTube, uh, through Twitter. All three of those are represented on the, by this broadcast today. We want to reach out uh, to the other opportunities that are open to us. We need the finances to go to Peru and go to uh, uh, go to Panama and go back to Thailand, hopefully, um, 
soon and God is opening those doors uh, they're open and some of those doors are open they're just waiting on us to step through the door we got it we got the the uh, tent we want to use we, we we're raising up uh, a work right here in uh, Cedartown Georgia we need a building to run our ministry out of and uh, so we've been working on that for a while we got some money set back we're believing God uh, that as we as we sow as we go and sow uh, that that God will do great and mighty things and that's why we're teaching word of the word of his powers what we've been on the past two things and and we know the word is the seed and the power uh, and one thing Cheryl he says we have he gives us power to get wealth not just to get wealth to heap on on ourselves, but wealth that we can be instruments that God can use in His kingdom. Yes, we reap the we reap uh, part of the harvest. We we God blesses us and supplies our needs as well. But 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 God enables us and empowers us to reach. Uh, and and the anointing of God just on me to talk about this a little bit. And I appreciate you listening, and I appreciate your prayers. Uh, hallelujah last time we when we went off we prayed for somebody uh, to be saved and I believe God God touched somebody and I pray for you today for your healing and we believe God's doing some mighty things and we're going to speak the word of God to you today hallelujah and out of that word of God God's going to touch save heal and deliver and uh, we stand together Cheryl and I are together in agreement for you we're in agreement for whatever God wants us to do uh, because God brought us together as a team and we believe God's using us as a team and we, we're going to uh, go go and do what, whenever and whatever God wants us to do and we appreciate that uh, we love you and uh, we let's pray before we, Cheryl starts Father in the name of Jesus we thank you God for the word of God that's stirring in our hearts and our lives and we bless you today God we ask you Lord that you would just minister the power of God and Father Cheryl and I agree to get today for every man woman boy and girl that's listening God that you touch their lives that you stir them God that you meet their need God we thank you Lord God we are serious just as serious about meeting their need God is as, as we are receiving the our needs man and we thank you Lord in the name of Jesus that it's your will that that they prosper and that they be in health even as their soul prospers and I thank you Lord we speak the word of your power that you manifested in lives today in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, I just want to say I wasn't laughing about the 50,000. I was thinking more in lines that we really need 50 million. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. You know, I've heard it said a lot that you can't outgive God. Well, it's easy to say that, but it's an absolute different matter altogether when God asks you to give and you don't know whether you can give or not. I've had times when I gave my grocery money because that's how God moved on my heart. Yeah. But you know what? I've never gone without food. And we we buy good Neither food. Neither have I. <laughs> We buy healthy food, which is more costly than yeah. just buying a box mix and throwing it in the oven. But we believe we believe for that. Amen. Um, and you know what? You, as a Christian, we can either obey the word of God, or we can know what to do and not do it which the scripture says is sin and not have the blessings of God see the I am going to do we are going to do a teaching on giving the different types of giving in the word and what the word really says about it at a future time when God instructs us to right now we're talking about the word of his power well, do you know that the word of his power can supply all your needs when you're obedient to the word Amen. of God? If we could only get this straight in our minds that God does not ask us and tell us to give so we would be poor. He says, give and it shall be word of his power. Amen. It shall be given unto you. 
All through the scripture, he talks about the blessings that come by our giving, what happens when we give to the poor, what the blessings are. Um, you know, as Christians and as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we got to get over this poverty mentality, yeah. this fear mentality that if I give, I won't have enough. Well, see, that's the way that the world thinks. You know, I've got to hang on to this or I won't have any money. I grew up with a tremendous fear of not being provided for. Now, it wasn't that I wasn't provided for. I was provided for. But there was such a poverty mentality that I was surrounded with that it affected me more than being able to realize I had food, I had clothes. Um... You know, I had everything I needed, but it just, I couldn't see those things for the fact that there was so much fear somehow instituted in me that I wasn't going to be properly provided for. And it's not the truth. I'm telling you, we serve a mighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. He is our Father. Yes, He is. And what did He say? He did say He would provide our needs for us. Um you know what God's not the problem he's just not and we're going to talk about that a little later on but let's try to get into the word for today we're talking about the word of his power now either we believe he has power and that when he utters his word it can produce something real and tangible or not now <clears throat> The whole Christian life is based on faith, as I've often said, but faith is something that grows. It is a fruit of the Spirit. It is also a gift of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, I, I know sometimes I probably come <laughs> across as very strong in what I say, but here's the thing Good. about it. We've got to be shaken out of our apathy yes. sometimes. Amen. We've got to say, this is our God. This is the word. This is what I am to do because I serve the living God and do it. It's just pretty much the way it is. All right, so we're on lesson 28 and <clears throat> going to look at some examples in the First Covenant Old Testament books of the word of his power and I'm going to start with Noah now we know that God visited Noah gave him an instructions to build an ark but he didn't just say build an ark he gave him very specific detailed instructions on how to do it so um, let's look at Genesis 6 I'm going to start with verse 5 and I want you to listen carefully to the things I'm going to be talking about with Noah and with all of this thing because I feel like so many people have misunderstood the way God deals with humanity sometimes. So verse 5, Genesis 6 verse 5 says, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was evil continually. Now I'm going to stop there a minute and say this. God gave us the imagination. The scripture says we were created in his image. Part of image is imagination. And God intended for us to use our imaginations to be creative, to come up with creative ideas inspired by God's dealing in us and teaching us and so forth. But there is certainly very real imaginations of people that are evil. Uh, we can certainly look at our world today in 2023 and see that evil is very blatant very rampant and it's been sent for a purpose from the kingdom of darkness first of all to kill our children it's always been about killing the children if you can look in the scriptures and see that in both both the first and um, new covenants it's always been about killing the children but not just the children it's about destroying the parents yeah Ch children need parents they need parents that have a brain and parents that aren't strung out on drugs and alcohol and 
parents that aren't selfish and full of themselves. I understand that because I was a selfish parent and so self-focused and so full of fear. But God delivered me from that. And we've got to be parents that have uh, the understanding of the scriptures to bring up our children properly so that they don't have to go through the junk we've gone through. All right, so that's just a little sidetrack there. Uh, Genesis 6 and verses 12 and 13, and then I'm going to read verses 17 and 18. God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, here's God speaking again. First he looked and he saw something. He didn't just leave it there. Oh well, it looks like they're not doing very good down there on earth. No, he said something and he said it to Noah. That was the only person he could find to talk to at the time. And here's what he said. The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, <clears throat> and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Verse 17 says, And behold, I, this is God speaking, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. Now we talked about this breath of life in the last lesson or so from under heaven wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die but with you Noah will I establish my covenant and you shall come into the ark you and your sons and your wife and your sons wives with with thee <coughs> excuse me alright I want to talk about a couple of things here um, let me get a drink of water real quickly. A lot of people look at the Old Testament and read it thinking that God's mean and angry and all of those things. I mentioned that in the previous lesson. And to a certain extent that's very understandable. But that's why we're, we are instructed to rightly divide the Word of God. And that covers a lot of things concerning rightly dividing the Word of God. But I want to um, look at this word violence. God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, through the people. Okay, so violence came into the earth through the people. This word violence means, now listen carefully, this word violence means disruption of the divinely established order of things. If we can get an understanding of this, think if the sun got out of its order of what it was directed to do, the earth would not rotate right. Everything would become cold and dark and lifeless. So when we're talking about this type of violence, this is a disruption of the divinely established order of things. Look at our lives. When we do not walk according to the Word of God, you know, God gave the Ten Commandments uh, through Moses, and thou shalt not, and a lot of things have been said about all this, and we're not under the Old Testament law anymore. Well, the New Testament law is just as mighty as the Old Testament law and the Ten Commandments. More. And it's very yeah. clear in the New Testament that love is the fulfilling of the law. Now, that should not be difficult for us intelligent creatures to understand. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Why not? Well, there is no other god. Any other god that you or I make is a made-up god from our imagination. When it comes in our imagination, like in the 
uh, heathen nations, which Israel also became involved in, they took a piece of wood and sculpted it to make something that they would bow down to. Yeah. And God's looking at them saying, what is wrong with you? Don't you see that you made this with your own hands? And you're going to bow down to this thing that can't see, it can't speak, it can't hear. There was no word of power in that piece of wood that you've just made your God. Here I am. But the children of Israel couldn't hear. They didn't listen to God. They didn't listen to anything that God had to say. Off and on, they were back and forth, up and down, through all this whole time of seeing the miraculous things God did, and then the next breath complaining and grumbling and all of that stuff. Well, sometimes that's a description of us. I want to read <coughs> two scriptures to you. One is Isaiah 64, 8, and it says, But now, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Then again, that's from the first covenant in the new covenant in Romans 9, 21. The Holy Spirit says this, has not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? And somewhere in the scriptures, I couldn't find it right off because these were, these thoughts just came to me. And it says, who are you, old man, to talk back to the potter? What right do we have? What right do we have to say, God, you didn't have the right to destroy the earth. You destroyed all those people. You killed them. You're a murderer. What right do we have to say that to the Almighty God? He's the one who made us. But he didn't make us with the... Uh, he didn't make us with the heart to do bad things. We were made in his, his image and his likeness. However, he did make us with a mind and with a will, mm -hmm. with emotions. Mm -hmm. And so we had the capability of saying, we'll eat of the tree of life or we'll eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If we eat of the tree of life, we will have life. Yeah. If we eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We're going to know good things. We're going to know bad things. We're going to know things that may be right, things that may not be right. But what we do know is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil will not bring life. That's right. There's only one tree that brings life. All right, we'll have to pick up with this because we're out of time and going to let Roger finish up here. But let me say this, when you read the Old Testament, if you've had trouble like I used to have, and you see all the things that God did, <clears throat> look at it, reading it from God's perspective. You know, if you have trouble seeing the, the love and grace of God in the Old Testament, ask Him. That's what I had to do. I remember the day when I was reading through the Old Testament. And there's some horrifying things in there. I don't mind telling you. I just put my Bible on my lap and I shut it and I said, I will never, never read another word in that Old Testament unless you can show me your love in it. And it was a long time um, before I would read anything in the Old Testament. But God did change my heart and He opened my eyes. See, we're blind. If we can't see it, we're blind. And we need our eyes opened. But when He did, oh, I saw such a wonderful Father. I saw such a God of love and grace. Such a God of patience. And it changed my life. It changes still to this day. 
when I read the Old Testament, it is glorious to me. Yes. I see such a wonderful God in there. Anyhow, I need to get it over to Roger so he can finish his Amen. Well, today. you will, you will, Cheryl, because <laughs> the nature of God didn't change. Right. It was. It's always been God's intention uh, to redeem mankind uh, since the garden. I mean, that's the the whole thing has been to redeem mankind. Now He gave us the law as a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Right. So that was part of his plan all along, and that's a whole another thing I've been actually going over the past couple of times uh, further than I should, and forgetting my time frame here. But um, it doesn't really matter on live, but as we go into other <clears throat> media uh, sources, we need to be sensitive about our time. But but you know, we'll pick it up again. I, I hope you're hearing. The power in what's being taught here. I hope you're hearing the, um, and I say I use power because we're talking about word of His power. I, I hope you're hearing. God wants to produce His power in you because if you watch what Jesus did, whenever He, whenever He hung on the cross, He said it's finished, and then He got up, rose again on the third day, and then He, and then He spoke and gave instruction. To his disciples, and he said, "Now go you into all the world. The works that I do, now you're going to do them, and even greater, because I go to my Father. So now, what? How? How is it greater because he goes to the Father? Because it's not only him doing it in the earth as one man. Now he's taken up his abode. The Scripture says in us. Now where's the word of his power coming from? It's coming. You know, I was thinking when we first opened up." The, the the lesson today that about the times whenever and, and I've done I did it myself back in my earlier years when people say I want to hear the audible voice of God <laughs> you know I want to hear God speak in an audible voice well I've, I've done that a couple of times and it was at least it was audible to me but uh, you know when somebody when Cheryl speaks the word of God I'm hearing the audible voice of God it just looks like Cheryl <laughs> uh, you know when your pastor speaks the word of God to you yes. uh, he's speaking that's the audible word of God uh, mm -hmm. it just looks like your pastor that's good. Uh, when he or she enter. and and see uh, we discount don't don't discount the way God speaks to you okay. uh, you know in the Old Testament uh, he spoke through a donkey to stop a prophet from making a mistake and uh, you know God can speak audibly and speak through a donkey and speak through uh, anything he wants to but God has chosen to speak his word through people so today I want to I want to encourage you you know get the word of God that's why you need to read it for yourself because uh, when you get in here and you can begin to speak it to yourself yes uh, you know I've got uh, on my on my desk uh, by my desk, I've got the Word of God. I've, I've even got prophecies that people have given me uh, that that bore witness from my spirit sitting right there, and I read them uh, several times a week, and I, I, I rehearse them to myself and go back to the Scriptures where it says, I go back to, you know, I, I still go back uh, to John 3.16 for God so loved the world because sometimes it's easy for us as human beings uh, to forget that God uh, why God did God do what he did why did Jesus come to the earth for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so now we begin to remember and praise God uh, we understand what he's doing so he's given his word unto us that we now uh, can give it. I, I taught last night, real quick. I taught last night uh, a group of uh, preachers. I say last night from the time we're taping this. Um, you know, Jesus took 12 men. And the, the miracle he did, if you remember that miracle where he broke the fishes and loaves and fed 5,000 besides men and women, uh, he didn't do that by himself. But he had men that he had trained and trusted. He broke it and put it in their hands. God's going to put something in your hands. <laughs> He's put the word in you Amen. that you can break and give out. Well, God bless you. We're, we're going to finish for today. And um, 
Uh, well, let's pray. Go ahead, Cheryl, and pray. Father, we just thank you. You are so good to us, and, and you are perfect in all of your ways. Your love is so encompassing, of, and your forgiveness, Father, of all of our mistakes and the things that we don't understand and mess up on, but you're just so wonderful to us, and we appreciate and value you. We do pray the blessing of God to rest upon your people and be manifested to them. And those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, awaken them to you, Father. Those who have known you but they have been discouraged and disheartened and disappointed, reawaken them, Father. Draw them back to you, to your loving, caring arms and just be a true Father to them. And we just want to honor you in the Lord Jesus Christ now. And we give you all praise and glory. And we thank you that you're active, you're working right now to bring about your will and purpose. And we give you honor in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless. Thank you for tuning in. And we pray that God go with you. We'll see you next week. Tune back in with us.